Hey, what's up? So Sambit here from Sambit PhD. If you have been seeing my channel, I make videos about study abroad, uh, mostly studying in Europe, Netherlands, Germany and different countries and also some interviews. So this video is specifically focused on how can you shortlist different universities when you are applying for master's study abroad. This is a very long overdue video. So this is specifically based on my experience because I have been already living in Netherlands for almost six years and I have been helping students for the last four years via different mediums like Quora and YouTube. So that's why I thought like cover different points that you need to really consider when you make a decision whether you want to study abroad and how can you shortlist the universities for masters. So the first point that I consider the most important is uh, like which location you are going to like for example when I was applying I chose some places in Europe and some places in US but I paid a lot of attention when you are going to some places like maybe Norway or Canada like how is the temperature how cold can it be is it really tolerable or maybe if you compare Norway or Finland which I also considered when I was applying for masters abroad is like um, how will be the climate and uh, whether it there, how much daylight will be there because there are some days I've heard like there's only 10 minutes or one hour daylight so it, it matters a lot and apart from location I would say like how is the attitude of the internationals there are a lot of uh, I think like long back when I was applying there was a lot of uh, issues of racism in Australia but these things pop up and they change year by year so you need to take into account also that like what is the attitude of the internationals in all these countries that you apply for masters and finally I would say because I am in Europe that's why this thing pops up if you go to US or UK you may not find this a significant problem um, is like the language so like for example I have mentioned this repeatedly if you go to Germany uh, you really need to have certain level of German when if you want to survive there in terms of integration or jobs or anything but in Netherlands that is not the case but I think in most European countries you need to learn the local language um, so yeah so that is also a factor by the way thank you uh, Yoket for sponsoring this video. Yoket is like your one-stop study abroad location where you can find everything. They have a wonderful app and website which you might be seeing on the screen. So Yoket offers online services and they have a vast community of international students. If you want to know anything about the language tests, like if you have anxiety about the language test or if you know about how you apply for the universities, what are the requirements, how to find roommates, financials, everything, all these information about study abroad you can find on your case. So moving on to the next point, I would say like uh, the ranking and reputation that is very, very important. Like for example, in my case, my bachelor's was in information technology, but I was applying for computer science programs because I was very close to that. So uh, the ranking and reputation. So if when you see the ranking, I would say like, for example, to Delft, I think it's ranking if I remember correctly in 2015 when I came for masters in computer science was somewhere around 100 uh, but the computer science ranking I mean the faculty subject wise ranking sometimes is also maybe more or less than the global ranking so that is the point I'm trying to make so irrespective of the university ranking it is also wise to see what is the ranking for your faculty or the stream that you are applying for and for reputation I would say it's more like a very soft score so you need to obviously browse through different professors profile talk with alumni and uh, maybe see on LinkedIn like what kind of research work they're doing or maybe what kind of jobs they are getting and then you can have an idea like um, how is the reputation ranking in that field and what are the opportunities moving on to the third point I would say this is absolutely essential that uh, you should have a very strong alignment so when you see that course program like you can f uh, I think everyone has a uh, course guide which shows you like what are the different courses that you can take in that program and uh, what is the syllabus what kind of materials they follow 
uh, even if they don't have the updated one you can follow something from the previous year and if you browse through these materials you can know like what is your uh, interest to which you want to apply or what you have the background and how close is it to your expected uh, study requirements so this is very very essential and moving on to the fourth point so this is i think very important that you should uh, it depends on what you want to do after masters and sometimes people also don't know when they start masters whether they will go for a phd or research or some kind of high paying jobs or any kind of jobs so you need to know like these uh, so for this i think you also need varied sources to confirm like it can be available on the university website it can be on linkedin it can be on glassdoor like what kind of job opportunities those uh, universities offer in your faculty in your program and uh, what kind of uh, research environment they give you or what is the after master's opportunity and obviously when you look for research or jobs you also want to know like what is the average salary uh, whether this is this is sufficient for if you're a single person or if you have a family so you want to know like your expenses and uh, savings and salary so how can it support you in everything and talking about the expenses now comes the fifth point which is like uh, the cost of studying because I can just give you many examples, but I'll give you the one that is near about me. So, for example, if you compare Netherlands and Germany, they are, have a stark, stark contrast. Like uh, Germany, most universities are almost free uh, with zero tuition fees and few universities charge you very nominal fees. But if you come to Netherlands, it's really, really expensive for international students when they're coming to study masters abroad, like the non-Europeans. So yeah, the cost of studying is very, very important and the same for cost of living also, which is one of the expenses that you'll spend while masters and talking about cost, you can never escape like what are the funding opportunities do I have? What kind of scholarships can I get? So all these things you need to consider when you talk about the cost of studying. And by the way, the things that I mentioned now for that also Yoket will be very, very helpful. Uh, who are kindly sponsoring this video so you can have a look at Yoket something called grad school finder which you might be also seeing a demo on the screen so grad school finder helps you to shortlist different universities uh, based on different criteria so once you have given these exams like GRE, TOEFL, IELTS you can use grad school finder to enter like maybe your gpa and uh, scores that you have and all these different boxes and then you can find based on that criteria what are the different universities that you can find to apply so it's really really helpful instead of you going to different places and shortlisting them you just go to a one-stop solution like yoket and find everything in that software in that interface okay moving on to the sixth point so as we mentioned about expenses uh, we did not touch upon another stream of income which is like part-time jobs or internships because many places industrial internships give you money like in netherlands also so yeah you have to see like how many hours you can work in part-time jobs is it really feasible that you can work in part-time jobs simultaneously while studying and how how much study load will you have when you are doing part-time jobs will it is it possible and uh, how much money you can save with that and how can it help you to fund partially your studying or living when you are abroad so that is very important similarly you can also look for any sort of teaching assistants or ras i think for netherlands i know like you can get some tas which can fund you partially but I'm not sure about RAs and similarly like in US also you have this RA, TA so it depends where you are applying look for these points carefully moving on to the next point which is our seventh point is about alumni so I have mentioned in different points about contacting alumni so this is an explicit point which I want to mention is that uh, the word of mouth that you get from the alumni is very very important because they can really summarize uh, what challenges they had what are the different experiences they gathered in their time in the university and also give you an hint or an idea like what can you expect after your 
मास्टर स्टडी एब्रॉड फ्रॉम दैट यूनिवर्सिटी सो रियली आई थिंक बिफोर यू अप्लाई मे बी वन और टू इयर्स बिफोर यू शुड बी इन कॉन्टैक्ट विथ मेनी एलुमिनाइज नॉट ओनली वन बिकॉज इफ यू हैव ए वेरिड सेट ऑफ एक्सपीरियंसेज दैट विल हेल्प यू ए लॉट आई वुड से माई फ्रेंड्स so moving on to the eighth point i people say this is not a major point but i say it is a major point because you see this policy changes every year so because of policy changes the stay back period that you have because many times i've seen people don't get jobs immediately after master so if you don't get jobs immediately or maybe in a research position then what can you do if you want to stay in that country then you should carefully see what is the stay back period like for example in netherlands you have a one a uh, year stay back period similarly in uk i have heard it was one and recently they modified it to two so like that you have to see like uh, what is your expectation and how much stay back period you have after masters for searching these jobs uh, and maybe that can be a deciding factor in your case so look for that moving on to the ninth point so the ninth point is very very interesting it is about the acceptance rate which i think uh, you also need to take into account when you shortlist universities and classify them into different criteria like uh, maybe based on the acceptance rate or the cut off they accept like ambitious safe or moderate so it is really essential that you know what is the acceptance rate uh, and what are the other difficulties and challenges that you can expect there so talking about these challenges uh regardless of all these challenges if you think that you lose that human touch like someone who can guide you really step by step then i would say again yoket will be of really really very helpful with their premium subscription so yoket has a premium option where you can have a human guide who is like a very highly dedicated and experienced counselor who will work step by step with you till you fly abroad to that dream university how cool is that so this is basically a one stop shop in your pocket so you don't worry any more about all these steps so quickly moving to the last three points i guess the 10th point is very important because most of my subscribers are indian subscribers i think more than 50 or 60% were watching the videos so they, we normally look out for our fellow indians so you will always be curious to know like how many indians are there uh, among all these internationals so and how is the social life how is the ease of making friends and uh, how is the work life balance how are the people how easy is it to approach them yeah so these are the things that everyone considers so moving on to the final two points i think this point is similar to the previous point so uh, if you can integrate with the society then are there any barriers to social integration like as i discussed in the beginning like maybe barrier because of the language because of the attitude like for example here dutch people are very direct and uh, not like indian so even if you feel bad they will say you if something is bad or if something is good so yeah it, it depends on the culture and how what are the barriers and the final point which i think it is important after staying so long abroad is like uh, if you can know beforehand like what are the permanent residence or citizenship options you can see these videos on my channel on germany and netherlands which i have already made but yeah you should know these things before coming i would say even if it is a minor point but if you have plans to stay longer in a certain destination then i would say you should also do this extended research of knowing like what is what are the options you have so that you can kind of get some benefits and stay longer in the destination so i hope you learned something from this video and if you like this video don't forget to smash the like button share this video help each other out subscribe to the channel till next video goodbye from netherlands peace